ever since it was announced, stage two of this year's Tour Down Under had been earmarked as a potentially crucial day for riders with hopes of winning this race overall. This particular route from Stirling to Paracoon would be a brutal day in the saddle, with the stronger climbers getting an opportunity to shine on the 1.6km ascent up Torrens Hill Road for the finish. Before that, five lumpy circuits around the start town of Stirling before cresting and descending Norton Summit en route to the final climb of the day. The riders were thankful for the much cooler conditions during today's stage, and despite early attacks the race was still all together at the opening sprint point of the day at 23km. Ben Swift, a new signing for UAE Abu Dhabi and the host of this week's GCN Instagram takeover, took a hotly contested dash for the line. Soon after, the tension eased somewhat and that allowed Yasha Sutelin to go clear. The German, riding for Spanish team Movistar, quickly forged a margin of around 50 seconds, which had expanded to three minutes by the time we reached the second intermediate sprint at kilometre 65. Behind, Bora Hansgrohe clearly have aspirations for the points classification this week. Peter Sagan was up there, but it was his teammates Michael Kolar and Rudy Selig who did a good job at denying easy points for the other teams. Suterlin continued to ride strongly, but with the general classification up for grabs today, there was no way he would last the distance, and he was caught on the drag towards Norton Summit with about 30 kilometers to go. A hair-raising descent ensued, and near the bottom, Rowan Dennis and Sergio Enau were both caught out by punctures. Drafting like this behind a team car is technically not allowed, but race commissaires may choose to look the other way in the event of an unfortunate mechanical. Back up front, the race was well and truly on, with Orica Scott setting a solid pace thanks to a selfless effort from Caleb Ewan, the young Australian sacrificing any chance at retaining that Oka leader's jersey in the hope that Simon Gerrans or Esteban Chavez may clinch it at the end of the day. Peter Sagan delighted the fans with an early attack, but it was Richie Port who took things over inside the last 1500 metres. His attack on the steepest section of the climb distanced Gorka Itzagire and Orica Scott's Chavez. The BMC man fought all the way to the line, emphatically winning the first big battle in this year's Tour Down Under. Itzagire and Chavez came in together 16 seconds behind Port, with Rowan Dennis recovering well from that puncture to lead a diminished peloton home at 19 seconds in arrears. Race leader Caleb Ewan rolled in 9 minutes and 28 seconds down. You know, the boys, the BMC racing team boys this morning, they're just incredible. They looked after me the whole day and uh, you know it's nice to win on the paracomb it's good to get a win this season and uh, yeah now we're trying to defend this jersey thanks to time bonuses of 10 6 and 4 seconds for the first three riders across the finish line port takes the ochre jersey with a handy 20 second buffer over its agire stellar rides from jay mccarthy and nathan Haas mean three australians occupy the top five places on gc Join us again tomorrow for Stage 3 from Glen Elg to Victor Harbour. Make sure to subscribe to GCN by clicking on the globe to make sure you miss nothing from the Tour Down Under. On this screen you can catch up on Stage 1 of the race or find out a little bit more about the unwritten rules of cycling, including drafting behind team cars.